Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, The Truth About God. My name is Erica Brown, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you. I got some people listening all over the world, and I really appreciate that. Um, if you're listening to me on my podcast, what's up? I'm glad you're here. And if you have been with me a while, what's up? Okay, I'm glad to have you. Happy to have you, okay? Today, I want to talk to y'all about a little bit about me and what God has done for me and who he's been to me and how all of my pursuits led me to him and how all your pursuits will lead you to him as well okay all rolls in to him okay it's more it's more than not fitting in or feeling secluded I had nothing before I found him. I had nothing. And when I say nothing, you know, I was lacking inside of myself. So the things that I truly needed, I didn't have. So that's what I mean when I say I had nothing before I found him. He is my friend. Like, Jesus is my friend. I'm not a person who's very vulnerable and I'm not a person who easily trusts people but Jesus I can honestly say he is my best friend he is my very best friend he's my confidant and I tell him what I can't tell to anybody else what I can't express or expose to anybody else he knows I tell him and he actually helps not just listen not to say that you know my friends in my life um, are good friends. Or I'm not. I don't value them. I don't appreciate them because I truly do. But my nature is just more private. And Jesus is my friend, like for real, for real. He is my my best friend. He knows what no one else knows. He's my best friend in a way deeper than the meaning of that word. He is my safe place. When I know I can't go anywhere, no one else is going to understand. And he's he's there. Even when the stuff is funky. You know, I'm not just talking about meadows and rose petals and butterflies. Like, I got some stuff going on right now. And there is no one that I can vent the fullness of what I feel and what I'm thinking and how I'm processing it. There's no one that I can do that with but him like that in that way I come to him to vent when I'm calm and I come to him to vent when I'm angry <laughs> okay like I don't I've learned not to hide all my all myself from Jesus so before I get too far let me give you the first scripture reference it's Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Let me read that to you guys one more time. It's Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Even as I'm reading that, like I told you, I got some stuff going on right now. As I'm reading that, the Holy Spirit is comforting me and encouraging me. And Jesus is speaking to me right now, even as I'm speaking to you. He knows his plans for me. His plans are for welfare. And um, down here it says peace, you know. So welfare and not for evil to give me a future and a hope. Just even now, reminding me that everything is going to be okay. Like he's always with me. Like always with me always helping me always encouraging me always strengthening me always blessing me and always giving me giving me his peace he is my counselor i need a lot of counseling you know if i had to pay for the amount of counseling that i need i don't really know <laughs> if our finances could take it okay and i'm just gonna be honest about that and i need a lot of counseling i need a lot of talking i need a a lot of space to express myself and god is that for me he really is 
and he's an excellent listener. Jesus is an excellent listener. He even blesses me to still receive what he wants me to have in the spirit, even when I can't stop talking. Because sometimes I even try to calm myself enough to be like, okay, let me get quiet so I can listen to the spirit. And even in those moments when I just can't do it on my own, okay, the spirit just calms me. His spirit calms me and helps me to um, still hear from him, even when I can't, I'm talking, even now God is soothing me even now he's soothing me okay and i know he loves me i know he loves me i absolutely know that he loves me and there was a time i didn't know that i'm gonna be honest with you there was a time that i didn't i couldn't see past me i couldn't see past my weaknesses my flaws the things i had done shame guilt i couldn't see past that to a loving god a god who loves me unconditionally who doesn't look at me through the lenses of the worst thing I've done or you know the things that I would be ashamed of or guilty of you know he never never brings it up <laughs> actually as I'm you know the only time God will remind me in my spirit about something that I've done honestly is when you know if I'm trying to get out of pocket like you'll remind me no baby you got issues too all right but not even in a vengeful way like how people can be like remind you of the things that you've done to hurt you you know or use it against you or try to take you down a peg or two not like that but just to say okay i want you to be my humble servant my humble child okay and i want you to never forget because the same pit that i'm bringing them up out of i brought you up out of too Okay, and that's a blessing to me and it helps me to relate to people in a different way okay so like I said there was a time that I didn't know how much God loved me and I couldn't see past me but he does he does he absolutely does every day and he's loved me into belief I didn't will myself into it I didn't you know fix myself so i could receive god's love unconditionally he loved me into that place he loved me into belief i failed and failed and failed and failed and failed and he never changed he never changed he never changed he never criticized he never mocked he never degraded he never changed and he loved me into an understanding of his unconditional love and peace i believe god loves me unconditionally i believe god loves me unconditionally because i'm a sinful person okay and i need a savior and if you're not come to that today and maybe you're a christian and you're a person of belief and you're kind of struggling with that god loves you god absolutely and adores you okay i needed that i needed to be loved in that way let me give you the next scripture scripture reference before I go any further. It is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. Yep, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. Let me read that to y'all one more time. It's Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. That scripture speaks to places in me that I get so frustrated with myself with the things I think or I feel about certain things or certain people and God just is always reminding me I will restore health to you and your wounds I will heal declares the Lord he will heal you he will restore health to you that's his job he is healing he is health it's in his heart to give that to you. It's in his heart to give it to me. So if you're struggling today and you're unhealthy and you're sick and you're emotionally sick and you're spiritually sick and you're relationally sick and you're, you know, just sick, just sick, okay? God is health. He will restore health to you and he will heal your wounds. You just got to bring them to him. You just got to talk about them. You just got to be honest and say, that hurt me. I'm struggling with this. I'm not dealing with this correctly. 
excuse me, I need some help. And he will heal your wounds. That's been my experience. I need it. I need it. And I know a lot of people um, don't necessarily like to be honest about stuff like this. But this is a human thing. I need it. Validation. I needed approval, confidence, strength, and courage. I needed those things. All the things that people either pretend they don't need or try to seek from the world in the wrong way. God himself told me things about me. He told me things about me. And this is all the time. This is every day. He tells me things about me that I never heard before. He told me and described me to me. And I like he described me to me. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what he had put inside of me. I didn't know what my purpose was in the earth. And I think I mentioned this to y'all in another video that it was at one point in my life I just cried and cried out to him because I just didn't know what to do or what I was supposed to be. And it seemed like everybody had their stuff together except me. And God told me who I was. Like, and it was a shock. Like, Lord, that's who I am? Like, that's who I'm meant to be? Like, really? So if you're dealing with that today, and you just don't know who you are, ask God. He'll tell you exactly who you are. I guarantee you, it does not line up to what you think about yourself. It's so much greater, so much higher, so much bigger, so much broader. When God started telling me who I was, I was like, for real? That's who I am? I don't feel connected to that. I feel like I'm this, 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 that, and the third. Okay? And then I wrote it out. I wrote it out. Let me tell you. Okay. I wrote on a piece of paper what, who I thought I was. What I think of me. That's what I wrote that on that paper. I wrote what I think of me. And I just wrote it. Everything. I didn't hold nothing back. I just wrote it. And then when I was done, the Holy Spirit said, now what God thinks of me. And I was just writing, 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 writing. I had to even go to the back of the, um, of the tablet that I was in to fit in all the things that God thought about me and what, and who he said I was. It was the complete opposite. The complete opposite. You're not who you think you are. You're not what you've been through. You're not what people say about you. You're not what people think about you. You're not what you think about yourself. You are God's child. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are blessed. You are head and you are the head and not the tail. Okay? You are cherished. You are loved. You are forgiven. Jesus got on a cross and died for you. You are not what the people say about you. You are not what they think about you. You are not what you think about yourself. And don't you ever believe anything different. If your esteem and your thoughts of yourself is not linked to heaven, then it's wrong. It's wrong. That's just it. If you're thinking that you're a failure, you're a phony, you're weak, you're sad, no one likes you, you know, you're dumb, you're ugly. All those things that the world tells us about ourselves, or you may even be saying to yourself, you may be talking so bad about yourself. Before the world even gets to you, you didn't tore yourself down. That's not what heaven thinks about you. That's not what God thinks about you. And that's not what he says about you. God rejoices over you with singing. God rejoices over you with singing. He sings songs about you. That's how wonderful you are in his eyes. That's how wonderful you are, period. So if the world and your enemy is telling you anything different, know today that's not the truth. It's not the truth. You are created in his image. You are perfect. Because Jesus died on the cross for you. You are covered in his righteousness. That's it. And that's the truth. Okay. Like I said. I needed validation, approval, and all those things. And seeking it from the world. And like I told you. God told me things about myself that I did not know. He, t he literally told me who I was. And it was totally different than what I thought my makeup and my and my character he revealed things to me no one could have ever seen or known but him nobody not my mama not my daddy not my husband not my children 
not my siblings, not my friends. He told me things about me that only could come from heaven. That only could come from heaven. And I love him. 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 Okay? And he loves me. And he loves me. I don't want you to think that I'm sitting here boasting in my love for him. I'm boasting in his love for me. I have never in my life been loved so wholly and completely. Except for when I got in God's presence. So, and I'm not saying this as a diss to my husband and my kids and my family. They are great and they love me and I love them. But it does not compare to the person who created me. How could it? How could it? And there's nothing wrong with saying that. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Our love that we have on this earth, it should be a reflection of heaven. But how God loves us, the who created us, who knows the, the hairs on our head, he has them numbered, okay? Who put his spirit inside of us, he's closer to us than even our own breath. What? Come on now. There's just nothing compared to it. So I'm not boasting in my love for him. I'm boasting in his love for me. I'm boasting in his love for me. And if you have not experienced it, if you think that God don't love you, if you think that he don't care about you or don't want the best for you, that's a whole entire lie. God is in love with you. He absolutely adores you. He cherishes you. He cherishes you. He died for you. He's not withholding anything from you. Happiness, peace, joy, contentment. He will give you all that. Bucket loads, barn fulls, anything that you need. You got it. Because you have a father who absolutely adores you, okay? What are you pursuing, child? What are you pursuing, child? This is your father. What are you pursuing, child? Come home to where you belong. Hmm. Come home to where you belong. Come to your father and find the grace you so desperately need. Okay? This message blessed you, helped you, or encouraged you in any way. Alright? Wait, I hear, I hear, I hear him saying to pray for you. I hear him telling me to pray for you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for your children. I pray for your children who don't know you. I pray for your children who are lost, who are wandering around in the darkness, who think they're alone, who think that they don't have a father who cares for them, who loves them, who absolutely cherishes them and adores them. Bring them into you the bosom of your love, Father God. Comfort them on every side. Give them peace that surpasses understanding. Give them wisdom and discernment and call them home to you. Bring them near to you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Seek after their hearts, Father God, and bless them to seek after your to seek after yours. Encourage them. Empower them by the power of the Holy Spirit, Father God. Give them the courage to turn away from evil and turn to you. Give them the courage to believe you. Give them the courage to believe that you love them, Father God. That you accept them. That you approve of them. That you have them in the center of your will and in the palm of your hand. That you will never leave them or forsake them. And that you are good. You are good. You are mighty. You are merciful. You are kind. You are generous. You are patient. You are everything that we've ever needed, Father God. I pray that your children will come to you. And they will receive your peace. That they will come to you in peace. And that you will give them peace that surpasses understanding. It's in your precious Son, Jesus' name, I pray and ask it all, Father God. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all, Father God, amen. Alright, babies. If this message blessed you, helped you, or encouraged you in any way, or prompts you to come home to your father, please like, subscribe, and comment below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.